The CHL is a very interesting league. For generations, it has pumped out some of the best talent in NHL history. Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, Mario Lemieux. The list is very long and the CHL will still continue to pump out some amazing talent. Because even though CHL draft numbers have been declining, it is still the premier development program in the world. And with that being said, the CHL is made up of three different leagues. The WHL, the OHL, and the QMJHL. And what makes the CHL so awesome is the Memorial Cup playoffs. Where the best teams from each league battle for the Memorial Cup. And so every year we get some amazing playoff hockey. Where the best prospects in the world put on a showcase. And with that comes some incredible performances. Which can ultimately earn you the Stafford Smith Trophy for being the most valuable player during the Memorial Cup. And it's also a phenomenon because some players can be so dominant in the CHL but can never translate their games to the NHL. We have players who could shut down Connor McDavid on a nightly basis that have never played a single game in the NHL. And some players who struggled in the CHL but went on to have amazing NHL careers. In today's video, we're going to go over previous Memorial Cup MVPs and see how their careers have panned out today. And today's video's question is, do you think CHL players should get paid? Because if you guys weren't aware, they've actually been getting into some, I guess, legal trouble recently on the topic of paying their players. So I guess I'd love to hear your opinion. Comment down below. And yes, that is a Flyers jersey. I wouldn't really consider myself a fan, but I used to know Mike Richards and actually attended his hockey camp when I was a kid. So there's probably a picture displaying right now. And make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. Let's get straight into this video. We'll start in 2009 with Taylor Hall. And around this time, Taylor Hall was demonstrating exceptional talent. Playing for the Windsor Spitfire a season before his actual draft year, he put up 90 points in 63 games. And of course, had a very dominating Memorial Cup with 8 points in 6 games. Where he won the cup and took home the MVP trophy. And so at this point, all signs were pointing towards Hall being the next big player in the NHL. And in Hall's draft year, he would further elevate his game. 106 points in 57 games and another extremely dominating Memorial Cup. Where he put up 9 points in 4 games, including 3 points in the final. Won another Memorial Cup. In fact, Taylor Hall is the only player in history to take home back-to-back -back Memorial Cup MVP trophies. Hall then would of course get drafted first overall by the Edmonton Oilers and he'd have a very, I guess, interesting career in Edmonton. Where he never fully broke out as a superstar, but you always knew he had more to offer. So in the summer of 2016, Hall was traded for Adam Larson. And with the Devils, Hall would finally break out as that superstar. As he won the Hart Trophy in 2018, where he put up an extremely impressive 93 points. And today, after a slew of contract drama with the New Jersey Devils, Taylor Hall is a Coyote. And Hall today is still an elite player in the NHL. He's had a lot of setbacks with injuries, not to mention, you know, 90% of his career being on a rebuilding squad. But I still believe that Taylor Hall can have another MVP season. And of course, Hall has truly shown that his back-to-back -back Memorial Cup MVP awards we're definitely not a fluke. Next, in 2011, we have Jonathan Huberdeau. And again, another draft eligible prospect who would dominate in his draft year. As Huberdeau would put up 6 points in 4 games, score the game winning goal, win the Memorial Cup, and of course take home the MVP trophy. And this would of course shoot up Huberdeau's draft stock as he went from being around the 5 range to being a solidified top 3 pick on top of scoring 105 points in his draft year. And so, Huberdeau will be drafted third overall by the Florida Panthers. And Huberdeau definitely had a bit longer of a development curve because he kind of hovered around that 60 point range for many years. But today, he is hands down a top talent in the NHL. And arguably a top 10, if not top 5 winger. As Huberdeau broke out last season with 92 points and was on pace for 93 points this season. And with the Florida Panthers being that up and coming team, I still believe that Huberdeau has much more to prove. As Huberdeau is entering the prime of his career, so I can only see his production increasing. So for Huberdeau, who clutched the Memorial Cup in his draft year, he's definitely translated that game into the NHL. Next, in 2012, we have Michael Chaput. And Chaput is definitely a massive wildcard, as he was never regarded to be a high-end talent like a Huberdeau or a Taylor Hall. Drafted in the third round by the Flyers, Chaput has always been known for his hard work ethic. And in this tournament, he would truly elevate his game. 
as the Cataracts were definitely an underdog team. And Chaput would carry his team on his shoulders as he registered 12 points in 6 games. As the Cataracts would defeat a young Max Domi and Bo Horvat of the London Knights. Which of course earned them the MVP trophy and they took home the Memorial Cup. And Chaput today is a minor league scorer. As he has had a lot of success in the HL, but he's never really able to translate that game into the NHL. Now he does have a career 169 games in the NHL, but more in a call-up basis. As Chaput has been utilized in the bottom six when an injury does occur. And so for someone who dominated one of the best development tournaments in the world, unfortunately Chaput was never able to bring that game to the NHL. Next, in 2013, we have Nathan McKinnon. And for the fourth time in a five year span, we have another draft eligible prospect who absolutely dominated in his draft year. As Nathan McKinnon was expected to be the next superstar in the NHL, as he was the number one ranked prospect for the 2013 NHL draft. And McKinnon would demonstrate his game breaking talent as Mac put up an astounding seven goals, 13 points in four games. As Halifax would defeat the Wagon Winterhawks team to take home the Memorial Cup. And McKinnon would of course take home the MVP trophy with his dominating performance. And another storyline from the series was Seth Jones versus Nathan McKinnon, who were both battling for the first pick in the 2013 NHL Draft. And Nathan McKinnon dominating this tournament would ultimately solidify himself as the number one overall selection, as he would be drafted first overall in 2013 by the Avalanche. And today, McKinnon is a consensus top three talent in the NHL. And the best way to describe McKinnon is just electrifying. As he demonstrated in the Memorial Cup his game-changing talent, and demonstrates this on a night-to-night -night basis in the NHL. Next, in 2014, we have Edgars Kulda. Because after being drafted in the 2012 import draft, Edgars would have a pretty underwhelming rookie season, where he amassed 17 points in 64 games. But where his game would really explode was the playoffs. As Kolda put up 14 points in 22 games, where he nearly eclipsed his regular season totals in 42 less games. Very impressive. So in 2014, we saw some great development where Kolda would score 30 goals, have 60 points, and dominate the Memorial Cup. As he put up over a point per game in the playoffs with four goals, seven points, and five games, including the Memorial Cup game winning goal. And doing this would ultimately earn Kolda a seventh round selection by the Coyotes. And unfortunately for Kolda, he would never make it into the NHL, as Kolda would actually never play another game again in North America. Because after his heroic Memorial Cup showing, he would sign a contract in the KHL, play in the Czech League, and is currently in the VHL. And Kolda was really a player who just thrived in high pressure environments, but he was just never able to bring his game to the next level. Next, in 2015, we have Leon Dreisaitl. And this year for Dreisaitl was honestly a gun show. Drafted third overall in 2014, Leon was forced into a bottom six role on the Oilers right after his draft year. And being a fan of the Oilers, I was pretty furious. And of course, hindsight is 2020, but it was very obvious that Leon needed at least one more year of development in the WHL. I see it only put up 9 points in 37 games. And to add salt to the wounds, Edmonton refused to let Leon Drasada play in the World Juniors, and then one week after the World Juniors ended, he got sent down anyways. Where's the logic in that? However, fortunately for Leon, he would go on to dominate the rest of the season in the WHL. 53 points in 32 games, and a very dominating Memorial Cup. As he registered 4 goals, 7 points in 5 games, However, Drysdale is the first person on this list to not actually win the cup, as Michael Doug Cole and the Oshawa Generals would shut the door and they won the cup. And today, Drysdale is a top 5 talent in the NHL, 110 points in 71 games this season. He was on pace for nearly 130 points, just insane. Next, in 2016, we have Mitch Marner, and Marner, alongside of the London Knights, had one of the most dominating performances in CHL history. Because this team was a wagon, with Dvorak, Matthew Jachuk, and Marner leading the way. And on top of having 116 points in 57 games in the regular season, Marner had an astounding 14 points. 14! In 4 games! Are, are you kidding me? 
as they rolled through everyone, including a 9-1 win against the Wee Kings, and they took home the championship. And of course, Marna's 14 points was a no-brainer for him to take home the MVP trophy. And today, Marna is of course a star. A career-high 94 points last season, and this season he was on another 90-plus point season pace. As Marner is a premier playmaker in the NHL, and there's absolutely no surprise that he continued his growth after dominating the Memorial Cup this year. And next, in 2017, and I hate to overuse this term, but the Erie Otters this season were another wagon of a team. Alex Dabrinkit, Anthony Shirelli, and Dylan Strom leading the charge. And after a season where Strom had an astounding 75 points in 35 games, it wasn't a surprise that he would dominate the Memorial Cup, as Strom put up 7 goals, 11 points in 5 games. However, they ran into Mikhail Sergachev, Logan Brown, and the biggest wildcard, which was Michael DiPietro, who shut down the door in the finals. However, because of Strom's 11 points in 5 games, he would take home the MVP in a losing fashion. And Dylan Strom would go on to having a very interesting NHL career. Because Strom had very high expectations, being a former third overall pick, from one of the most stacked first rounds in NHL history. Because Strom would struggle, as he bounced back and forth from the NHL and AHL, and would be traded in 2018 for Nick Schmaltz. And surprisingly, Dylan Strom would bounce back as he put up 51 points in 58 games, as he clearly flourished in his new environment. Now, I will say his defensive game has been very suspect, both the size, vision, Strom has some great upside. And considering many fans were labeling him as a bust, Strom has proved a lot of haters wrong. But anyways guys, do you guys think that CHL players should get paid? Comment down below. And I want to thank everyone for the awesome ongoing support. And I also want to thank everyone for not getting too mad at me for my recent ad reads. If you guys didn't know, I do marketing and I've always been very excited to work with brands and companies and do kind of these, I guess, partnerships. So I do want to thank everyone who has purchased the case from Red Zone. They make some awesome stuff. But anyways, I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys later. Next, we have a caseless iPhone. Huh. Well, good thing Red Zone Cases just released their Star Series 2.0. Besser, Petey, Horvat on one case. Are, are you kidding me? Austin Matthews, Connor McDavid, Get one of these beautiful cases today and use code RTH at checkout to receive 20% off your order. The link is in the description below.